Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Kids red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say does the star spangled Greetings to the entire Yukon School of Nursing community and the SIGN class of 2020. I am Deborah Chun, Dean and Professor at Yukon School of Nursing. While this is not the graduation ceremony any of us could have predicted or wanted, today we want to salute you, our graduates, and celebrate your achievements. As you watch this video, I want you to know that while your faculty, friends, loved ones, and university staff are socially distancing at home, they are gathering together and joining you in this moment, your moment. Please watch this video and let your imagination run as you celebrate your monumental day. I hope that you share this video with your loved ones and friends. Maybe you can even watch it together over video chat on the phone. Yes, let's do this together. Let's commence commencement together. Today, we honor you, the graduates of our SIGN program, in a reflection celebrating on your successes as you venture out into the state, the nation, and the world to provide the nursing care that is so urgently needed. I know that each of you have had different experiences, different challenges, and different joys, and that the student journey has seldom been easy. This year, your year with us, has been especially challenging as you sought to learn in the face of a pandemic. And learn you have in so many ways. You have not only displayed a remarkable amount of caring, but have advocated for yourselves, your patients, and your classmates. While this day marks the end of this particular student journey for you as an undergraduate, it is only the beginning of a lifelong journey of learning, of commitment, and professional service. For all of you, being a nurse means going beyond the job requirements. It is not simply a job. It is using all of your knowledge, your skills, and your whole being to meet the needs of others of the most vulnerable, and always remembering the message of compassion and caring. And let us never, ever forget the importance of the seemingly low-tech intervention of holding someone's hand, of being present. Over the past year, you have all learned many lessons beyond what your faculty had so carefully planned for you in the curriculum. You have lived through quickly and constantly changing conditions in the classroom and in the clinical setting. You have experienced the solidarity of your classmates. You have made this program better, if not for yourselves, for those who will follow you. 
And if these were not lessons enough, you have now personally witnessed what it means to be isolated, to have your movement restricted, and to live with fear and uncertainty. You are now better able to imagine what it is like to be alone, to have limited mobility, to be sick, to face one's own mortality. How could all of this not make us better nurses? So, as you transition from nursing student to professional nurse, always remember our philosophy of praxis and the fact that you are Yukon nurses, carrying on a tradition of excellence 78 years in the making. You are forever a part of the school, and we will always be proud of you. I am proud to recognize members of the sign class of 2020 who throughout their undergraduate careers performed at the highest scholarly level. They graduate today with academic distinction. There are six valedictorians, Robin Adelkoff, Laura Linsky, Linda McCauley, Julia McMahon, Tiffany Montero, and Kayla Waring. They all had the highest grade point average for the class of 2020, a 4.0 to be exact, in more than 120 credits earned. Congratulations. I would like to acknowledge our Sigma Theta Tau International inductees and members of the Armed Services. Congratulations and thank you. Each year, Sigma Theta Tau International gives an award to recognize one student's outstanding achievements. Recipients are nominated by our faculty, so no one else knows who will be honored here today. Dr. Judith Hahn, the president of the Yukon School of Nursing U Chapter of Sigma, will present today's student award. As the current president of the School of Nursing Mu Chapter, I'm pleased to present the Sigma Theta Ta International Award to a student who demonstrates excellence, leadership potential, and best exemplifies the spirit of caring in nursing. The SIGN program faculty considered students who had achieved an excellent GPA, showed leadership potential, and possessed a spirit of caring. Our awardee has been helping people since she was a child. First, it was a family who needed help with the language of their new country as they navigated the healthcare system. Then it was feeding the homeless in New York City as an undergraduate, but that was just the beginning. Even through this crazy year of 2020, she's worked to keep the lines of communication open between her fellow students and the School of Nursing leadership. She's maintained the highest grades possible throughout the year, was selected to participate in the dedicated education unit program and was further selected for the intensive care unit where she has excelled during her last semester of clinical. She thinks the difference between good and exceptional is passion and her passion drives her to reach higher each and every day. She wants to be where she will make a difference as a caregiver and educator, where she can be a proud trusted Husky. There's no doubt Tiffany Montiero will achieve her goals and be the ultimate Yukon nurse and Sigma nurse leader. Congratulations, Tiffany. Thank you, Dr. Hahn. I would like to now introduce Dr. Robin Miller, who was selected by the class to give this address. Dr. Miller's lectures are always appreciated by the students, and so this one will be extra special for all of you, as this is her last semester here with us. Dr. Miller, the entire school salutes you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Dean Chung, Associate Deans Dr. Starkweather and Dr. Lazenby, Director of the Pre-Licensure Programs Dr. Schneider, and of course the students of the Sign BS 2020 class. Faculty and guests, I am honored to be representing your faculty by speaking at your commencement ceremony. If you know me, I feel like there is always so much to say, so much that we still want to teach you, 
so much that we still want to guide you through. We have discussed and hopefully you have learned over the course of the program and maybe even your lifetime, the importance of civility, being the best role model that you can be, providing non-judgmental nursing care, the need for lifelong learning, how important it is to know what you do not know, nursing theory, etc. What I will discuss today is challenges, being observant, being present with your patient and caring for self and others. Warning, I am gonna talk about theory, but the good news is I've been limited to about 13 minutes to talk to you today. How can we close out this year without talking about challenges? I will be brief here since I know it has been discussed quite a bit in our program and also in the media, but I wanted to tell you about Travis Roy a standout hockey player who 11 seconds into his first game at Boston University took a awkward and awful fall resulting in leaving him quadriplegic. This October, Travis Roy died from complications of surgery at the young age of 45. He led an inspirational life, becoming a motivational speaker and raising money to fund research for those with spinal injuries. A quote of his really resonated with me. He is known for saying, sometimes in life you choose your challenges. Other times the challenges choose you. And it's what you do in the face of those challenges that define who you are and what you'll become. I truly believe in the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. I know this seems cliche at times now, but I believe this proverb can fit into many aspects of our lives, especially in challenging times. I believe that it takes a village to get through nursing school. It takes a village for your faculty to guide you through nursing school. It takes a village to get through a pandemic. You may feel that you are here today after a hard year and really years of hard work because your family, friends, faculty, and nursing colleagues helped to facilitate your learning. Yes, you had to learn the uh, information yourself, but some of you had family and friends that helped you through the process, maybe by supporting you financially, helping more around the house, taking care of the children, cooking a meal, calling to offer support, and touching base to say, hi, I'm thinking of you. I would not be where I am today if it weren't for my family, friends, and certainly all of you, students, staff, and faculty. All of you have taught me how to be a better teacher. I have learned so much from you. For the students, you bring so many experiences to the class. This is just one reason that so many of us love to teach in the SIGN program. You challenge us to be better teachers, advisors, mentors. I have learned about different perspectives on patient and family care, the incredible motivation and heart of students, the strength and persistence of those who are going through personal and or family issues during the program. A few years ago, I learned about the 10-10 rule while giving heparin injections. And more importantly, I learned not to be embarrassed that I didn't know that rule. Once I fessed up, I learned that I was not the only one. I have learned the best sayings, metaphors, and similes imaginable. I've learned management and nursing theories and learned how to use them to guide my practice in teaching students. Text abbreviations that always have me stumped at first. The quote, you're killing me, Smalls from the great movie Sandlot and how to laugh at myself when I was smalls in probably too many situations. How to be even more respectful in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I have watched and learned from those who are in tough situations and handled it with grace and professionalism. I have learned to be more vibrant in the classroom and not use as much of a calming voice which students have said have put them to sleep. 
I have learned that when the world just seems stupid, to think out of the box, do so with passion, and most of all, positivity and laughter. The transactional model. I just can't help but sneak in theory here. It is a developmental model that I studied and used in my clinical and research work when working with newborns and children. Transactions, and this is a very abbreviated version, transactions are where the activity of one element changes the usual activity of another. I believe that we are changed by our daily transactions with each other. I am not the same person that I was at the beginning of your program, for example. Through my transactions with you, I have changed. I have learned from all of you. I have cried and laughed with some of you. I have pushed myself to be a better and become a better role model, teacher, and person because of the questions you asked, the suggestions you have made, and the transactions that I've had with you. When I think of transactions, I also think of how my grandfather greeted people like they were the most important people at that moment. At a very young age, I learned from him to treat others these way, this way, even those who seem unkind. We never know what someone is going through. Treat everyone with kindness, always. In that one seemingly simple moment, you can change someone's moment, change someone's day, and maybe even change someone's life. In our transactions, we need to be observant. We need to pick up on subtle cues of those around us. Remember when we told you during and after nursing school that you would never look at another person the same way again? I bet you have found that to be true. Really look at your patients and those around you. And when the alarms go off, try not to look only at the monitors, but also look at your patient. You are the one at the bedside picking up those subtle differences in patients, and not just the physical attributes, not just the change in oxygenation or the change in blood pressure, but maybe that tinge of sadness or that twinkle of hope. One of the reasons that some of us want to be a nurse is that being a nurse gives us the opportunity to positively impact patients, families, and communities. One way that I feel that we can do that is to be truly present. That is, be open to your patient. Extend yourself on behalf of your patient in such a way that meets your patient's needs. In these current times, we are using more and more impersonal ways of communication. Our nursing care has become more technology-laden and low, more low-touch than ever before. Many times we as nurses are focused on technical skills. Yes, nurses do need these technical skills. They are very important. But always remember about the aesthetics of nursing. Nursing presence has always been one of the things that set our profession apart from others. In being present, we use all of our senses. We need to open our eyes, our ears, our mind, and our heart. We as nurses and as people have the capacity for incredible impact on people through our caring presence. Part of being observant and being present is knowing your patient. As my grandfather lay unresponsive in the intensive care unit at Hartford Hospital years ago, I was worried that the nurses and team would not see my grandfather for who he was to us. He had a heart valve replacement with unexpected complications. Before the surgery, he was a very vibrant man, still working as a janitor at his church, climbing on ladders to fix the roof, and yes, against our advice at the age of 87. His healthcare team in the ICU had never seen him as the vibrant man that we knew. So I wrote a note. Okay, a page, single spaced. So I wrote a note to the nurses and the healthcare team, thanking them for taking care of our loved ones our loved one, giving a little biography and explaining who he was and who he was to us. So please explore and find out about your patient. And if you heard this next story before, I apologize. I have also told this story at another speech and during fundamentals at stores. 
I wasn't going to use it again until one of my friends and a colleague convinced me to do so. So I will take this opportunity, opportunity again to tell the story. My father always talks about his experience with two different nurses taking care of him during a severe episode of his ulcerative colitis. One who was disgusted, that's my father's word, with the situation just by reading her nonverbals and the other who is truly compassionate with a caring presence. You can just imagine how my father felt around the nurse who was disgusted. He felt rejected as a person, embarrassed, very sorry for himself, and alone. With the nurse who was compassionate, he felt that she gave him back his humanity. He felt respected as a person, even with a severe episode of ulcerative colitis. He didn't feel sorry for himself, and he felt that he was not alone in this situation. Afterward, he wondered, how could she clean up my mess? My father still thinks about this nurse to this day and wished he had told her how much she changed his life at that point. And it was about 30 years ago. So even if your patients or families cannot express their emotions at the time, you may still have made a big impact on their lives. I truly believe that in every encounter that we have, it changes all involved. And it is not only the patient who gets changed, it is the, also the nurse. And it is not only the student that gets changed, it is also the teacher. As you know, it can be very difficult to be present at times. You have other patients. You need to document and document and document. You may have other things on your mind, but please make the effort. In the process of being present, it can take a toll on us. We have to take care of ourselves, and I know that we are learning to practice what we preach. But when you leave the end of your shift, remember to take good care of yourself so that you can take care of others. That statement really is true. It is very difficult to take care of others when you are running on empty. And we have all been on empty at some point during this year, I am sure. There was a quote from Courtney Carver who created the blog, Be More With Less, and that this stood out to me. She said, that moment when you think you don't have time to take care of yourself is the exact moment you have to take care of yourself. So when you're having a really tough day and when you're having a really good day, remember why you became a nurse. I hope that you find the passion in whatever area of nursing you practice in and that your patients, families, and communities feel that passion. We hope that in your nursing program, you have had many nurses that inspired you. And our wish for you is that you'll be able to inspire others. My hope for you is that you become the best that you can be when presented with challenges that you are observant when opening your eyes, your ears, your mind, and your heart, that you take the time to be present with your patients, you learn from your patients, their families, and your colleagues. Be kind to yourself and others, and recognize that you are not alone in this journey. It really does take a village to raise a child, to get through nursing school, to live through a pandemic, and to transition to your new role as a graduate nurse and then a registered nurse. Please take care of yourself. You are worth it. You deserve it. And we need you to take care of others. I hope our paths cross again soon. Congratulations again on your graduation. Thank you, Dr. Miller, for sharing your wisdom with our graduates and for the key role that you have played in the SIGN program. Now is the time to recognize our graduates. This day marks the end of your nursing student career and the beginning of your transition to professional nursing. So, as you transition from nursing student to professional nurse, always remember that you are UConn nurses, our best and our brightest. Today is a special moment as you graduate from the program. We have mailed your pins to you along with a copy of the program so that you could have them for today's ceremony. Pinning is a ceremony with a rich tradition. 
the school and its alumni say that you have demonstrated the special characteristics of a Yukon nurse. Included in that group are nearly 8,000 nurses who already wear the Yukon pin. The pin is a legacy of the past conveyed to you, and it is a symbol of your accomplishments to come. Faculty have received this legacy from their mentors. Your mentors now entrust it to you. Since medieval times, heraldic banners, badges, and pins have identified their wearers to the world and how those wearers were prepared to serve. Your School of Nursing pin is a similar badge of identification and recognition. Taking a moment to look back, there are several historical traditions embedded in the pinning ceremonies in nursing schools worldwide. Our pin has the beautiful and sacred Charter Oak at its center. It is synonymous with wisdom, longevity, endurance, and hospitality. Dr. Snyder, director of our undergraduate programs, will now announce each student. Under normal circumstances, she would announce each name and the student would be pinned by their faculty instructor and then receive their diploma from me. At this time, I would like to acknowledge the important role that all of our sign and adjunct faculty have played in your education. Hopefully someone special can pin you today. You will receive your diplomas in the mail in February. Dr. Snyder. Thank you so much, Dean Chun. My name is Dr. Mimi Snyder, and I'm delighted to announce the names of our SIGN 2020 graduates. But before I do, I want to acknowledge the tremendous accomplishment in completing this rigorous, accelerated undergraduate nursing program. It has been a year to remember and one we will never forget. Your resiliency and courage to persevere in this program during a pandemic have been most inspiring. I'm confident that each of you will be an exceptional nurse who understands the true meaning of support for one another, teamwork, collaboration, and how to pivot and change directions with sometimes very little notice. May you all be well and thrive in your new careers as soon to be registered nurses. I will now announce each candidate's name in alphabetical order for each of the four Yukon campuses and we'll begin with our Avery Point candidates. Avery Point. Michaela Allen. Sydney Ewing. Jessica Faley. Erica Gonzalez. Laura Linsky. Henry Kasman. Lisa Kelly. Aaron Mandel. Amy Manning. Julia McMahon. Juliana Marone. Lily Wynn. Olivia Nicholas. Samantha Orsiari. Sky Petsiga. Allison Pear. Jillian Pfeiffer. Samantha Pisanis. Tabitha Raman. Peter Schilke. Veronica Surur Flores. Natalie Smith. Jenny Stone. Kenneth Tran. Maribel Wright. Rory Zampano. Samantha Zwier. Stamford. Robin Adelkoff. Nicole Calabrese. Allison Camillo. Kevin Chu. Sean Klaus. James Concanon. Juan Duke. Anna Eason. Sarah Figueroa. Catherine Finnegan. Jamila 
Freeman. Teresa French. Samantha Gaeta. Sydney Geeter. Eugene Koblick. Kelsey Kopek. Kiri Landish. Milva Lopez. Megan Mahoney. Stephanie Main. Linda McCauley. James McNerney. Jean Medina Salazar. Tiffany Montero. Audrey Odette Mukata. Maria O'Connell. Kristen Piva. Kelly Sherwood. Mishka Stern. Bianca Stone. Jack Sweeney. Nicholas Wills. Jonathan Yatko. Stores. Naya Akhtor. Kimberly Allen. Antonia Anderson Curtis. Anastasia Angelopoulos. Derek Badachek. Amber Vega. Courtney Bowler. Harold Burbank. Nicole Cadro. Michael Coates. Bridget Cox. Javante Danvers. Sierra Flores. Nora Gatt. Kelsey Giamatillo. Marissa Gulioso. Panta Hamzavi. Diomelis Hernando. Medina Hosseini. Sarah Jacobson. Amanda Levine. Vincent Lee. Mark Ligori. Jill Long. Keely Larrero. Shirley Mai. Alicia Manjafico. Alicia Matthews. Catherine Metzer. Stephanie Nixon. Cole Orgorzalek. Vida Awusu. Omar Padua. Kimberly Peckham Cox. Grace Perkins. Lindsay Perigini. Gabrielle Ray. Deborah Rodican. Chiara Santivenere. Zachary Sequera. Felicia Sicleri. Andrew Smith. Anna Walker. Max Walter. Kayla Waring. Griffin Yantush. Cody Zitkus. Waterbury. Michaela Ahern. Daniel Berlandi. Jessica Berry. Lion Bierbauer. Colleen 
Card. Saima Sikanjanen. Kevin Coyle. Jenna Dalla Valley. Jessica Deal. Aaron Elser. Bianca Fiori. Michael Gervasi. Nikki Greenstein. Madison Hoyt. Jillian Hewson. Caitlin Lawrence. Caitlin Little. Morgan Livingston. Karen Marino. Colleen Moros. Sandra Parkerson. Katrina Pecarella. Austin Poach. Jessica Rewa. Kiana Rocco. Elena Sable. Laura Sanchez. Sarah Santiago. Danielle Scarthy. Daniel Sigmund. Laura Stay. Vienna Sufka. Victoria Tavakini. Paige Tillinghast. Deanna Van Linter. Catherine Warner. Adrian Weagle. Christina Woods. Congratulations and welcome to the profession of nursing. We know that you will make us all very proud. Cherish your pin and remember what it signifies, your achievement of excellence and your commitment to meet the covenants society has given us, that of the respect and trust to be a professional nurse. At this moment, I encourage you to turn to the back of your commencement program and join your faculty in reading aloud our praxis statement. I would like to introduce Dr. Nancy Manister, who will lead us. I thank Dr. Manister for her years of leadership in the SIGN program and wish her well, as she also leaves the school at the end of this semester. To our students celebrating at home, Please join us in the Pledge of Praxis, surrounded by your School of Nursing faculty. As I begin my career in nursing, I pledge myself anew to that I will be professional in behavior, presentation, and conduct, respectful of the richness and diversity of others, and self. Accountability for my, for my actions. Excellence in scholarship, in scholarship practice, practice, teaching, and service. Integrity, inquisitiveness, and innovation. And service to the profession and the community. Thank you, faculty. In closing, I want to recognize the faculty, including our adjunct faculty and the staff who have been so critical to your success. I also want to thank your loved ones and friends who have supported you throughout your time here, as well as our dedicated alumni and generous donors whose scholarships were essential for many of you. I would also like to thank three very special people who worked so hard on this virtual ceremony. Linda Carlin, Michaela Kane, and Ryan Quigley. They really wanted to make this day special for you. As our ceremony ends and your life of learning continues, take the spirit of inquiry that has brought you to us and fueled your academic success out into a world that trusts you and needs you, 
now more than ever. In an article in the Hartford Current this spring, which holds as true now as it did then, Mike Anthony recognized the work of nurses. His words have stayed with me through these long months of this pandemic, and I hope they resonate with you as well. He writes, nurses look like heroes because they are just that. They look like prisoners too. They look like saviors. They look like victims. They look tired and tireless, committed and conflicted. They are in an impossible spot right now where we need them in the world as the world grapples with an overwhelming force. They are the best of America, versatile people in a complex profession, rushing to a disaster's epicenter, while the rest of us tiptoe through everyday life in a state of careful panic. What bravery. They are our silent soldiers. Nurses can. Nurses do. There is an incredible strength to these people, and they share an incredible bond. You are the future, and I am confident that the nursing profession and the health of the nation, and beyond the nation, are in good hands. You truly are the best of America. You are our best hope. May you all stay safe. Thank you.